Good morning students welcome to St Wilfrid's Law College online classes today we will be studying rules of interpretation in the furtherance of the previous lecture whereby we discussed what interpretation means how is it different from construction and different parts of the statutes now the first in rule of interpretation which we are going to discuss today is grammatical rule of interpretation now grammatical means there is a slight mistake in the words usage of words or probably the person who is reading that rule is not understanding it or has a very different perceivance of the word that is being used that has been used already under the sentence or the statute or the law now it is also known as the literal interpretation because according to this rule a word should uh, in easy language उसका असली मतलब और उसका लिटरल सेंस में मतलब जो कि डिक्शनरी मीनिंग होता है उसको कंसिडर करना ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंट माना जाता है वेर इन इट इज इजी टू कर्ब द इनजस्टिस विच इज प्रोवाइडेड बाय द रॉन्ग प्रिजर्वेंस और रॉन्ग परसिवियरेंस ऑफ द पर्सन टेकिंग द मैसेज ऑफ द वर्ड नाउ इट इज द सेफेस्ट रूल बिकॉज देर इज नो हार्ड एंड फास्ट रूल देर इज नो इंटरप्रिटेशन there is no modification which is to be required by this person who is trying to interpret the word even if it is a judge he has to interpret it literally go and go by what he understands it while reading a sentence format formation now words to be given true and ordinary meaning true and ordinary meaning means you don't have to fiddle with the meaning as it is supposed to be taken by the uh, act or anything else you have to take the literal sense meaning of the word which is to be uh, which is written in the law or the statute now for example i can i am giving you two case laws you can read further in your book now the case law number 1 is ram afta versus assistant sales tax officer in this case there was um, the the in ram avatar versus assistant sales tax officer the main part the main topic or the main word which was supposed to be interpreted was that whether beetle leaves which are tulsi ka patta are are followed or are considered or come under the category of green vegetative occupation now further it was uh, declared or it was uh, decided by the supreme court that yes beetle leaves come under green vegetative occupations because they uh, under uh, where uh, because in this beetle leaves are supposed to be occupied or aggregated in a large quantity green agricultural uh, vegetative occupations are supposed to come under a green uh, large quantity mein agar uska agriculture ho raha hai to wo green vegetative occupancy ke andar follow up karega now similar is the case in ranjit dudeshi was a state of maharashtra wherein ranjit dudeshi was a book uh, seller and he sold he sold a book under the name of lady chatterley's lover now the case under this was that anjit dudeshi ne jo book becha usko basically obscene category ke under file kiya gaya tha but the court was not the opponent was not able to um, prove that he had a mens rea of uh, selling that book first and the foremost things the word which was uh, interpreted under this was obscene the person here ranjit udeshi was not even aware of how exactly the what exactly the word means so this the government the court decided that since you cannot prove mens rea and he does not know the meaning of obscenity you cannot uh, charge this person with the case because we are not able to prove the mens rea over here and second of all he does not know what the meaning of obscene is and any you cannot judge the cover or you cannot judge the book by its cover itself so this was the case which it happened now second rule uh, under the rules of interpretation are mischief rule of interpretation now this rule ha has taken its birth from case known as hayden's case i am not aware of the facts of this case but there were four basic rules or principles which were which are which arise after, which have arisen after this case now uh, there basically these are the four major principles which uh, make a base for any rules of interpretation under the um, inter rule of interpretation for any court or any person who is supposed to interpret the law now the first rule being what exactly is the common law now for example any person who is trying to interpret you are 
अंडर अ नॉर्मल प्रूडेंस मैन यू शुड बी अवेयर ऑफ वॉट एग्जैक्टली यू आर डीलिंग विद वन पर्सन शुड बी अवेयर ऑफ वॉट एग्जैक्टली द कॉमन लॉ इज हाउ इज इट एप्लीकेबल टू द सोसाइटी एंड एट टू वॉट एक्सटेंट इज इट accepted by the society as a whole and unless it is not accepted it cannot be changed and you cannot modify it accordingly now the second second point which is most important is what exactly is the mischief or the defect under the common law which was not provided for us so and because of which we are supposed to interpret that law in a different angle or towards a different direction now the third one which is what remedy did the parliament has resolved now remedy being any other law besides the common law to change the ambiguity or the mischief which we are facing now the th- fourth and the foremost is true reason for the remedy one should be aware very well aware of exactly what remedy is been given to the society and how is it valuable to us this becomes the mischief rule of interpretation which makes the base of all the rules and interpretations and case laws i can say that this is the most used rule of interpretation amongst the supreme courts of india supreme court of india and the high courts of india now the third rule which we are going to discuss today is golden rule now golden rule is nothing but a pure a mere modification of the grammatical rule which we discussed earlier in this pre- in this lecture now modification of grammatical rule now modification itself tells you that you are not supposed to fiddle with any law or existing words inside the uh, law or any phrase that you are supposed to interpret now what the court is supposed to do is try to find the intention or the intent behind the words used in a particular phrase or a law provision now but if there is any ambiguity or mischief any ambiguity or mischief or absurdity or anything is found by the court he has it has the whole right to modify it so that to prevent injustice to an extent where it feels that this is the right manner now this is not a questionable fact because we are not allowed we are not uh, in a position to question the law so and i can give you an example a case a case law which is lee versus kanappa now in this case under the roads uh, roads traffic act the word stop was uh, interpreted whereby a person who is causing an uh, a person who is causing an uh, accident must stop now what exactly was interpreted is stop means that you are supposed to uh, stop for a reasonable amount of time reasonable amount of time so that the person who has been affected or any superior authority even the police or anybody can question you regarding the accident now this was the word which was interpreted there are further more examples which you can find in your textbooks i am only giving you one or two examples regarding this now there is a four, there are 11 rules of interpretation which we are going to study uh, i am discussing three right now in details and we will continue fourth one in the next uh, lecture i am just giving you brief crux of what exactly harmonious rule means harmonious rules means you are supposed to, if there are two laws or two provisions of under a statute and there you are supposed to interpret them simultaneously you are supposed to read those rules and if you feel that part a supposedly part a and part b are two rules of one one statute if you feel that part a can be applicable without part b and sim- and reverse in reversely if part b is ap- appropriately applicable under part without part a that is how you have to interpret them which basically comes to a point that you have to maintain a harmony and a basic uh, guideline towards it that is how you will interpret it i might end up reading you what exactly harmonious rule means it is a sound canon of interpretation that courts must try to avoid conflict between the provisions of statute it is the subject of the cr- it is the subject of the courts to determine the extent of the authority to deal with subjects falling within the legislature 
so to avoid conflicts both entries must be re read so that one of them can be inter interpreted and modified accordingly so you have to maintain a harmony between two rules and accordingly come to a decision whereby you are not uh, give, providing injustice and you are also not trying to change or amend any rule or regulations which the law gives you beforehand now there are five more six more rules which we are supposed to read i'm going to continue it in the next lecture thank you so much